FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and today is 7 12 19. Well, big news. I uh, wasn't sure I'd be able to do it, but I'm going to be able to attend Freedom Fest in Vegas. If you're a libertarian or thought about being one or don't know what a libertarian is, then you need to be here for sure. It's in Las Vegas, it's at the Paris Hotel, and it's going from, from July 16th to July 20th, with, which coincides with our Bitcoin contest. And I think you can find that contest now right on our site. Just go to Financial Survival Network dot com slash contest we'll be giving out up to 100 silver pre-1965 quarters to the winner who guesses bitcoin what the price will be midnight of july 20th and bitcoin definitely figures into freedom fest for sure well our good friend the founder and the guy who's kept it going for all these years mark skousen is with us mark it's great to have you back on so this freedom fest you think is going to be the best so far, huh? Well, you know, every year we say this is the best Freedom Fest we've ever had. <laughs> and I'll tell you, after looking at the full program, and, and people can now find uh, at freedomfest.com our entire program of 260 sessions and speakers and panels and debates, uh, this looks like the best year ever. Uh, <laughs> you know, our, our theme is the Wild West. And yeah. that is certainly appropriate to what's going on in geopolitics today. You just <laughs> never know what's going to happen yeah. coming out of Washington or or the response to it in China and so forth. It's just uh, uh, really amazing. And of course, Freedom Fest is more than politics. So we're also a renaissance gathering and talking philosophy and history and science and technology and healthy living and we have a full investment conference. We have the Anthem Film Festival. There's so much going on that it's kind of like a kaleidoscope. Uh, you just, every person has a different view. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've, I've watched it uh, change over the years. Uh, the, the companies that are exhibiting, uh, the younger people getting involved. That's the thing that always surprises me. Uh, younger people attracting them to, to the show. Uh, has that, be, has that been a challenge or do you think there's a natural curiosity? Well, it's, uh, it's a little bit of both. Uh, we've in the past gotten students for Liberty and, uh, uh, the campaign for Liberty, uh, the, uh, turning point USA. These are all youth programs, mm -hmm. uh, I teach at Chapman University, and I have uh, like being eight to ten of my students coming from Chapman in California. Of course, all of them are <clears throat> fascinated with Las Vegas and uh, the lure of Las Vegas and the gambling and the girls and <laughs> the and the guys or whatever. And and uh, that's always an appeal. And we we do uh, require them to. Uh, to spend time at the conference and not just to use it as an excuse to go to Vegas. <laughs> but we still, we get a lot of young people who are interested in our debate topics and uh, millennials. So we have a debate this year on socialism versus uh, capitalism. We have John Mackey representing capitalism. And we have uh, Professor Barry Eadland, uh, E-I-D-L-I-N, Eadland from McGraw, University in Montreal, who is a, a hardcore Marxist and uh, socialist, and he's going to debate him. So that'll be fun. We, we also have Kevin O'Leary. He's our keynote speaker from Shark Tank. I'm sure you're familiar with him. Of course. He's a, he's a no-nonsense, uh, cold, hard truth uh, about business, that business is about making money if you want a friend, buy a dog. And of course, John Mackey has a very strong social view that that business is all about helping others and socializing and uh, experiencing uh, uh, the the good, the beautiful, the heroic. It's, <laughs> it's more than making money. 
So it'll be a really fun debate. That's going to take place on Thursday, this next Thursday, uh, uh, July 18th. And by the way, the conference starts on the 17th, not the 16th, July 17th. 17th, And goes right. through the 20th. Uh, 20th is the anniversary of the landing on the moon, 50th anniversary. So we have Charles Murray and his wife who wrote a book on Apollo, the Apollo mission, who are mm-hmm. going to be speaking and, and taking Q&A. Uh, on that uh, that special event. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, I'm getting there the 16th, so I got a little confused because I wanted to get there. I don't like getting to a conference when it's already started. It's something I could leave before it's over, but I can't get there uh, after it started. It's just a weird uh, way I'm wired. You no, know, and 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 Carrie, uh, we we meet a lot of people on Tuesday. <laughs> yes. Some even come in on Monday. You know, we see them uh, around. The, enjoying Las Vegas and going to a show or, or meeting up with people. We have lots of people. I mean, Freedom Fest has become a, a kind of a focal point where people come mm-hmm. and go out to dinner together. And we have people having their uh, shareholder meetings and stuff like that uh, at Freedom Fest. So there's a lot going on uh, kind of behind the scenes uh, because it it is kind of the uh, central uh, clearinghouse, if you will, for libertarians to come together and, uh, you know, where, where are you going to meet? Well, let's meet at Freedom Fest. Uh, we're getting a lot of people who are doing that. So uh, we're closing in on a couple thousand people. Uh, so it's very exciting. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, I've interviewed Charles Murray before and uh, much maligned, much uh, slandered and attacked. But, and attacked. Yeah, physically, physically attacked. attacked. Right? I talk to him about that. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And I see the companies, I see you have, see you have Amir Adnani, somebody I've represented over the years, and a number of other companies. Looks like the profile of the companies attending is is really going up. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Trilogy Metals is a world-class developer in Alaska's Ambler Mining District. The company already possesses 8 billion pounds of copper, 3 billion pounds of zinc, over 1 million gold equivalent ounces, and now over 77 million pounds of cobalt. Trilogy's Arctic project boasts an after-tax net present value of $1.4 billion with a 33% IRR. Trilogy is led by an experienced management team with proven success in discovering and developing projects in Alaska. The company is well capitalized, has no debt, and possesses strong institutional support. Trilogy trades on the New York and Toronto exchanges under the ticker symbol TMQ. To learn more, go to TrilogyMetals.com. That's TrilogyMetals.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Uh, yes, we we have a big financial presence because that's my background. Writing an investment newsletter, I, uh, and I go to all the money shows and everything. Uh, we we have a lot of investment people there. But you know, if you don't have money, uh, your freedoms are limited. Uh, so uh, mm. it, uh, money it plays an important role. So we have a financial freedom conference at Freedom Fest. It's three and a half days. Uh, and this year we have Vince Foster, not the Vince Foster that, <laughs> that would be a tough that one. <laughs> killed in in the Clinton era. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he's back, uh, but no, the uh, he's the founder and chairman of Main Street Capital, which is the most successful private equity uh, fund uh, since 2007, outperforming even Warren Buffett. Uh, he's coming for the one and only time, and we're very excited about him. Uh, we're encouraging everybody to show up for his. Uh, his talk, he deserves a standing ovation. He's our number one. I mean, I, it's my biggest position in my IRA, and a lot of people have become wealthy uh, following his advice. So between him and Kevin O'Leary and John Mackey and a host of other uh, great speakers, uh, including many of the famous libertarians like John mm-hmm. Stossel, Sure. Uh, Candace you know, Owens. Those, those people are, are regulars, and Matt Welch and the Reason people, yeah. Cato people are all going to be there. We even have Candace Owens, who, of course, ah. is a black conservative, fiery black conservative supporting Trump. Mm-hmm. So we, we yeah. have a big tent. Oh, we have Justin Amash coming, which uh, yes. has been in the headlines for calling for uh, <laughs> Trump's impeachment, <laughs> and he, he just left the Republican Party. So it's going to be quite a group. Glenn Beck is coming. I hey, mean, the list goes. Pendulette. 
Penn Jillette. How did uh, Penn how did Gillette. Penn Jillette Penn wind Gillette up there? Coming. Yeah. yeah was... So people should just drive there, fly there, bike there, ride. But by mm-hmm. the way, we have the Wells Fargo wagon, the Wells Fargo stagecoach uh, on display there. They only have seventeen of them. I took it took me months to put this together, <laughs> and they're finally going to be here. I love it. And everybody's going to want to have pictures taken in front of the Wells Fargo wagon. For it's sure. It's really going to be fun. Hey, Herman Kane, I notice he's going to be there. Alan Dershowitz. Yeah. Alan Dershowitz, uh, oh, yeah. we'll have to ask him about his uh, Epstein experience there. He's been uh, dragged <laughs> into this thing. And, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's always a shock when I look at the guest roster and you got. 200 people coming this time. So it's like, it's almost hard to keep up with these. You really have to prioritize who it is you want to see. That's true. And one of the first things, the very first thing I always do is buy the uh, uh, audio recordings. We record all of the speeches, you know, and, and during the summer I'm in my car driving around and I listen to a lot of these speeches that I'm interested in, but you can only attend one session at a time mm. uh, while well, there's 10 breakout sessions at once. So uh, it really can be uh, uh, taxing. And what you have to do is uh, you go to the website at freedomfest.com or, or you show up when you show up at Freedom Fest and you get a copy of our printed program, you just circle the things you're interested in. And sometimes you end up circling two or three things all occurring at the same time. So uh, yeah. It is a bit uh, challenging to figure out which one you're going to go to. Yes, yes, that's for sure. And uh, I guess some of them are conflicting and you can't do it. Hey, what about the uh, movies uh, this year? What's, uh, what's up with that? Yes, uh, Joanne has put together uh, 30 different documentaries and narratives. We do have some narratives as well. One of them that's interesting is The, creeping, the Creepy Line, which is a documentary about Facebook and Google, Oof. how they're uh, censoring and directing, not just censoring, but yeah. directing uh, where, what you're going to see. Uh, for example, uh, we just did a, uh, my son did a videotape for Freedom Fest 2020, did a promotion, and she he wanted to get a bunch of uh, collection of AOCs, uh, rather naive comments and when she's saying <laughs> like, like, like all the time and yeah, stuff like that. Right. Well, Google makes it very difficult to find a lot of the negative stuff on AOC. It's mm-hmm. there, but you have to scroll down to who knows how many uh, hits before oh, yeah. you find something on that. So creepy line is a very important uh, one. And then uh, Maggot uh, Wade from Africa has a film about, uh, poverty in uh, Africa, and she points out how, uh, how um, you know, you're familiar with Tom Shoes, mm-hmm. right? and so Tom Shoes uh, it really plays up the fact that if you buy one of their shoes, they donate one free pair of shoes yes, to right. go to poor people in Africa and Latin America and so forth. And so she, she demonstrates how this has put local businesses out of business who are producing shoes mm-hmm. and uh you know the 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 downside of all of these uh um these uh, uh bleeding heart liberals who say oh we're really helping out the poor well they're taking away their jobs is what they're doing by giving out free rice and free shoes yeah. and free clothing and stuff like that i mean uh, why do you bother buying anything if that's the case so mega <laughs> wade is coming to talk about the, that yeah. and that looks really interesting as well so the film festival is always packed there's tons of people there to see films and then joanne puts together these uh panels afterwards with the uh, uh the producer or the director or the actor involved and it's really a fun fun event a lot of people go to that hey so Going back to something you said about the censorship by Google, by the social media platforms, I noticed that John Tamney is going to be there. He writes for yep. for uh, what was formerly a hallmark of American uh, journalism, uh, Forbes magazine. It's now a uh, Chinese outlet. Um, you know, majority owned by the about that. <laughs> well, no, I had a big debate with him, and he was angry at me. 
I'm always nice and happy when I interview anybody. I'm just thrilled they actually came on the show. And I'm saying, but look, Google is uh, is dominant. They're monopoly, damn close to it. So is Facebook, Twitter, and they're conspiring to de-platform people. And he, being a pure libertarian, says, well, they're private businesses. They could do whatever the hell they want. But we don't live in an environment. And you've written about this. This is what Freedom Fest is all about. We don't live in this Wild West freak capitalistic state. We live in a crony capitalist credit, you know, capitalist. We live in a, in a credit environment. And when you cut off access to people's ability to get platforms, PayPal, Patreon, all these things, uh, this is a classic example where the government has to get involved. Don't you agree? Well, the wild, uh, there was a period of the Wild West of the Internet. No question about it in the 90s and mm-hmm. into the 2000s. Now I would say, yes, there's all kinds of rules and regulations, and it's not just government. It is big business saying, hey, we're going to police this. We're going to monitor. We're going to uh, say what you can say, and we're going to take people down and stuff like that. I think it's a very unfortunate trend. It is private enterprise. They do have a right to do it. I understand that. Uh, but it's a natural weakness that uh, no matter whether it's government or private enterprise, the number of rules and regulations, the longer you're in business, the more mm-hmm. they come out. I mean, uh, HR, human resources is the fastest growing yeah. <laughs> part of any big, big company. Mm-hmm. So it, it, this is something that Peter Drucker warned about. And, uh, and, and so did Joseph Schumpeter. He said uh, why is capitalism going to fail? Uh, it's going to fail because uh, it doesn't, uh, it, it, it becomes too bureaucratic. Mm-hmm. And that's what's happening. Um, and uh, only new, fresh competition can come in and break those things up. And it does take time, but uh, I know that there's a tendency right now saying, well, we've got to regulate Google and Facebook and on. We can't wait for the market to come up with alternatives, but the market always comes up with alternatives. I mean, we've had mm-hmm. uh, IBM used to be a monopoly. Microsoft, Microsoft used to be a monopoly. They're, they're all facing heavy competition. I couldn't agree with you more, except that I will say the whole, you know, look, the internet is not the internet. It's a DARPA net on steroids. All of this was governmental money put in there. And there's also the question of Facebook was a DARPA project called LifeLog, which was intended to capture every interaction of a person's life from birth to death. And the coincidence, I don't know if you believe in coincidences or not, Mark, but on February 4th, 2004, DARPA ended LifeLog. And guess what company was founded on February 4th, 2004? Facebook. So great coincidence. So it's here because of the government. And it is uh, effectively, I heard that. yeah, well, just do the, uh, it's on Wikipedia. Not that that is your uh, source for all information by any stretch, because they're distorted as well by on ideological lines, but that much is, is true. So the fact is uh, it's now the public square. It's more than just uh, a website. All of these websites collectively are the country's, uh, public square, the speaker's corner, if you will. And the idea, so years and years ago before railroads, uh, railroads were private businesses and could decline you for any reason. Same with, uh, with telephone companies. They didn't have to uh, accommodate you if they didn't like your views. But then they became this concept of a public utility of a common carrier. Yeah. And I think common carrier, public utility really extends to these businesses. I hate regulation. I hate the idea of the government stepping in, you know, um, putting its boot on the throat of private enterprise, but we're kind of past that here, aren't we? No, I don't think so because they do have shareholders. The shareholders can revolt. They can stop using Facebook. Uh, They can uh, go and uh, at the, they can take over the company there's no reason why can't the why can't the Koch brothers put up enough money to take over 
Facebook uh, just by buying up all, uh, all the shares. I mean, that's conceivable. Yeah, but now the Koch brothers have teamed up with Soros. The Koch brothers, libertarians, but uh, but they have their own agenda. So if we're waiting for the Koch brothers to save us, we might have uh, worse problems than we think. Um, well, you, you can you can bring that up because we have Americans for Prosperity. Uh, they are uh, playing a fairly heavy role this year. They're mm-hmm. recognizing our significance, our uh, uh, level of influence now. So mm-hmm. Coke is inter. They're intervening now <laughs> in. Maybe they're taking over Freedom Fest. Hey, well, uh, <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Oh, first, folks. oh, so I, do I hear an acquisition? Oh, oh, uh, a friend of mine, that could be dangerous. <laughs> well, we will talk to them. We'll talk to anybody who's willing to talk to us at Freedom Fest because we know that's the one thing, Mark. When you look at AOC and you look at the collectivists, these people, the so called liberals, the left, they will not have a bona fide or a, an honest debate and dialogue of ideas. And that's why you've got the Googles and the Facebooks and the Twitters and all the others shutting down disparate voices. They don't want to Well, they haven't shut down uh, President Trump, have they? Yeah, I'm well, sure they're they trying. <laughs> it's a little hard to do that. Hey, I was there July 2015 um, it was right around my birthday when you had then candidate Donald Trump, who I know you're no fan of, who kind of from that point on, it was all, it was all uphill. You know, I mean, it was amazing. Oh, yeah. The momentum. No, in fact, they, uh, we have a polling here showing that it spiked up dramatically after he spoke on 7 his mm-hmm. lucky day in 2015. So we're taking full credit or blame for his election. <laughs> hey, well, one thing you have to say is, um, as far as his whatever the other stuff. I mean, I don't. We don't want to talk about him. I know how you feel. You know how I feel. Uh, but yeah, you know, let's let's talk about other things. There's <laughs> a lot more going on in the world. Although I will say, the front page of today's New York Times is very disturbing. I don't know if you saw it or not, mm-hmm. where the Chinese are denying it. it you know, they're arresting people, they're uh, denying mm-hmm. you exit, uh, they can take away your passport, uh, and they mm-hmm. took away one of the, uh, they de- detained for a number yeah. of days a high Coke, a Charles Coke, or Coke really? industry official. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, 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 they, there's they... stuff going on. In fact, uh, you know, Lee Schoolan has her uh, uh, Austrian economics course over in China, and she's mm-hmm. had one of her students arrested. So. That's There's horrible. All kind of, I, I won't go to China right now. It's very scary, I think. Yeah, well, um, you know, so when you look at uh, the way they run things there, we haven't quite uh, gone off the abyss like them. But our companies here, uh, Mark, are like uh, catering to the to the uh, the totalitarian state there. There's Facebook and, uh, and others, uh, big data centers there. Big, uh, they're big on... Uh, you know, on aiding and abetting what's really a a very uh, repressive regime, to say the least. I <laughs> mean, you know, that's, yeah, that's, no, absolutely. Yeah, they this don't. Is some of the things that we we discuss at uh, Freedom Fest, uh, we're going to have a foreign policy panel with the people from Cato and and uh, you know other, and, and we have Senator Mike Lee coming. Uh, we just oh, got good. a call. Where, we love uh, him. Uh, Ben Carson is interested in coming and speaking. Oh, really? Oh. oh, yeah. We got some interesting people. He's yeah. my neighbor here in uh, in uh, Palm Beach County, Florida. I bought a home down here. I thought he was leaving, but it seems like uh, his thing is like the Rolling Stones retirement uh, tour. It, it like never <laughs> ends, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah, well, the turnover in the administration. Hey, look, I believe in firing these inept incompetent government workers at any level because you and I know being in the private sector we don't have the luxury of at least unless you're a really big company you just don't have the luxury of having people who don't work and who don't uh, share the vision of uh, of the company and aren't out there working for the company but yet in uh, you know in our uh, our our government uh, none of that seems to matter yeah yeah so well, anyways, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. 
and uh, all the guests. I'm going to try to connect and interview as many of them as I can. I can't wait to see what Penn Gillette has to say. I know he's been a oh, yeah. libertarian for, for many, many years. And uh, funny, funny as hell as well. Very talented, like so many of the others. So, hey, I guess uh, I'll be buying uh, the, t- the recordings this year. Uh, so you just go over to freedomfest.com. Click that registration link. I'll be walking around. I think I'm going to help a friend of mine out at his booth. So if you see me, let me know. I'll buy you a drink. Financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Yeah, and hey, Mark, wish you the best of luck. And I can't wait for it to start. All right, Terry. Thank you. Thanks for interviewing me. Goodbye. See you on Wednesday. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.